Thank you for joining us here in Jerusalem. There's no doubt that we're in very hard times. And in hard times, our eyes are upon the Lord. In times like that, we're seeking comfort, but we're also seeking direction. And this is where we find our direction, especially in times like that. Shalom and welcome back. It's great to be here at the TBN studio here in Jerusalem. And today, I'm gonna try to deal with a very, very complex issue, especially in time of war. It's easy to talk about hope when you sit in your living room somewhere in the US or somewhere in Manila, wherever you are in the world. But holding to the hope that we have in the Messiah, it's a different episode, especially when we're here in Jerusalem in time of war. I have the great honor of having a beautiful couple from Jerusalem, Mike and Vanessa. Hi, Mike. Hi, Shmulek. <laughs> Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Shmulek. Thanks for having us, Samuel. Uh, both Vanessa and I immigrated from Canada and America. Jewish believers come, came to Israel, and now we lead FIRM, Fellowship of Israel-Related Ministries. And I think hope is such an important uh, mm -hmm. topic to discuss. With everything we've experienced these last few weeks here in Israel, we've, we've experienced hopelessness, we've experienced darkness. When it's you say we experience hope. hopelessness, can you elaborate a bit more? Because our viewers, you know, it's, it's words that they know. And I'm not sure everybody went through such a dark time. I know, maybe a month ago we would have said, remember the horrors of the Holocaust, never again are we yes. going to see this happen to our people. And we were convinced we're now back in the land, God's done a miracle, this is never going to happen again. But when we woke up on the morning of October 7th, and maybe even worse, the morning of October 8th, mm -hmm. where we started seeing these images, we mm -hmm. thought, the thing we said never again, now it's happened again. God, where are you? Mm -hmm. Where are you in the midst of this? And our, the, the, the trust we had put even in our own government and our own leaders and our own military, mm -hmm. it seems to all have failed us. So I think we're experiencing as a, as a society a lot of hopelessness. Yes. Vanessa, your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's actually really hard to have hope when there's so much unknown. And that's what's really hard to lean into. How do you hope that the Lord is going to do a miracle in the midst of such a terrible situation when really that's what we're supposed, we're supposed to lean on the Lord for our source of hope. And he's the one who is supposed to fill us and give us this belief that mm -hmm. it will not happen again. It's mm -hmm. not real. This is not really what's happening. This is not going to get mm -hmm. worse. And it's hard to lean into mm -hmm. that. It's hard to honestly lean into the Lord and say, God, I trust you. Mm -hmm. I have hope in you when you see a disaster mm -hmm. all around. But he is the one who provides this love and depth of hope that can come from Amen. within, that can overflow as believers, as he is our source, it overflows from us and it pours out to each person that we're coming in contact with. I agree with. 100% when we, when we were sitting in the green room, we were talking about hope as being a gift yeah. of the spirit. Mm. Hope is a gift that God gives us. Hope is not something that you do exercise to get into. You cannot exercise three months before a crisis yeah. and say, okay, now I'm ready. I exercise hope. I'm going to be hopeful. Yeah. When everything collapses around you, when you go from one funeral to another funeral, when you meet people, uh, I met a lady that her husband was kidnapped. What hope do you bring? Yes. Us? It's so hard. And this is why Hebrews 11 says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. So we have to believe for something that's not seen. And I think, you know, so many Christians, they love to quote this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, mm -hmm. for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. But that was spoken to an Israel that was at the verge of collapse in mm -hmm. exile. Their hope was gone. And I think it's so powerful. important, especially Very at a time powerful. like this where there's hopelessness. Mm -hmm. God is speaking a message saying, I know the plans, I know the thoughts, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. God can handle all of our emotions. He can handle everything that comes out of us. And I think sometimes we try and have it all together and we try and hold on and try and be strong. And I think what the Lord is asking us to is come to us with it all. And to, with let, just, go. And to let go. And to just come and say, mm -hmm. God, I don't feel that you are near. I don't feel that I have hope. I don't feel Amen. all of these things that I'm supposed to maybe feel. But when we come to him and say, God, I need you to infuse hope in me today. I need you to infuse this, the fruits of the spirit in me today. Amen. God, will you just strengthen my patience, my peace, every aspect so that way I can draw near and that I could be filled by you. He Amen. says, he promises Amen. that he will give it to us. And so we have to come to him honest and open and in need for him to be able to fill our cup. Amen. Michael, people are 
watching us all around the world, and I'm sure there are people sitting in their living room are going through a divorce, lost a dear one. Let's close this op episode with a word of hope. Yes, I think it's so important that as we uh, look at the circumstances, the thing that sets us apart as believers is that God gives us a peace that surpasses understanding. It transcends Amen. our circumstances. And we see with biblical Israel, God gave hope. He spoke hope and peace to them, even in spite of their circumstances. And yet again today, as a body of believers, we're called to be a voice and a message of hope in the midst of a dark season. So whatever you're dealing with today, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a family issue, only you may know that, but in the midst of your hopelessness, God wants to speak to you. I know the plans I have for you plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And we know that for those who love him, all things work together for good. Amen. Those who are called according to his purpose. So that's our prayer over you today. Welcome back and Shalom from Jerusalem. Actually, the word Shalom today is way more meaningful than ever. I'm sitting here at the TBN studio with Pastor Stephen Khoury, who is an Arab Christian pastor from Bethlehem and East Jerusalem. Stephen, welcome to our show. Shalom, You've been brother. here several times. It's very important that we understand that the war that started on October the 7th when Israel was attacked, Israel was attacked by Hamas. And we have to be careful not putting all the Arabs in one group. I think it's time to call the Christian world and the world as a whole uh, to, to God's righteousness, to call pushing people to call good good and, and evil evil, not to blur the lines, not to, to switch the lines. I tell people always, Surat al-Baqarah, which is the Quranic scriptures, calls Israel and the Jewish people as God's people. Um, that's very clear, we see it in there. Uh, and I think too many times we've blurred religion and faith with politics and that's what we have today. Uh, many of the Arab Christian community, they're silent, they can't say much, Brother Shmolik, but I wanna tell the world that just like not all your fingers are the same, every finger has its own, mm -hmm. Its own uh, print and identity. Not every Arab is the same. Not every Jew is the same. Not every not every person is the same. Mm -hmm. So we are calling for for calmness and peace for the sake of the children, men and women and children on the on the Jewish side who who have been killed and and, and terrorized, and, and also uh, men, women, and children, the innocent ones who have nothing to do with war and violence on the Palestinian side, specifically in Gaza, who who are stuck in the middle. And, and there are a lot more peacemakers out there than than than, than what we know and what we think. There's a war in the Middle East. Talk about what God is doing in the Middle East among the Arabs. We're seeing more and more Muslims are fed up and tired, Shmolik, with the same rhetoric of uh, the end and violence and, and terror and so forth. So we are trying to be that the address where people can come to and say, I want to know more about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Open your heart for the teachings and the person of who Jesus Christ is and let Jesus' personality, his character and the Holy Spirit, let that relationship change you, change you from within. That's what we're doing. So we're seeing hundreds either come to Christ or if they're not coming to Christ, they're open to a relationship with Jesus, which is very important, very critical. You know, Brother Shmuel, like we are always throughout the year. You and I have gone together many times with Arab believers, Messianic mm -hmm. believers in conferences and events. We're always trying to, to fulfill it. Ephesians 2. How we're doing that, not by just putting up a banner and a slogan, but we are trying to get mm. together to fellowship uh, during the, the, the Passover season, the Christmas season, uh, in conferences and events throughout the year, even taking people abroad to do conferences together. Why are we doing this? To remind the Arab and the Jew who are one in Messiah, mm -hmm. one in Yeshua, reminding them that uh, he has broken those chains, mm -hmm. uh, that we don't look at each other at by race and nationality. Our, our citizenship is now in heaven, um, and what's on earth is on earth, but our citizenship is for heaven. So beyond all these, we see forgiveness and we see grace. There's always some kind of internal questions that need to be answered. But we, we I, I tell people, put politics to the side. Let's talk about what does God teach us? What does God expect of us? If we live up to God's expectations, everything else will resolve itself. The problem is not everybody has the, the knowledge and the light of, of, of Yeshua. So therefore, you, we have to deal with things in, in the worldly aspect in, in a different perspective. Um, but God is God is moving things. I mean, again, it's people see the world news on Israel, for example, and they think every Arab is wants to kill a Jew and every Jew wants, hates the Arabs or, or whatever. And, and there are some groups like that. There's hatred and animosity. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to express themselves internally other than violence and, and, and hatred or, or revenge, whatever it is. But 
I believe there's a lot of people, the majority, they want to see a better future. They want to see a better, a, a better tomorrow for themselves, for their children, mm -hmm. for, their, for their grandchildren, whether it be they're Christian or non-Christian, whether it be believers in the Messiah or not. And there is hope. I'm very hopeful. Even with everything around us, I'm very hopeful because I see it. I'm living it. I've been here for 40 plus years in this country. I was born here. So uh, I'm experiencing it. But there is hope. Stephen, there's no doubt that we're in a very dark season now. It's a season that can go or into hate on both sides, yeah. or into a repentance and people turning to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How do you see the future? As, as you mentioned, Shmolek, right now, it's, you ask most people on the Arab side and Jewish side, everything's dark and gloomy. We, we need to ground right now more than ever. We need to ground our faith on the promises of what God has promised what's coming. Uh, that's one thing that I encourage people. Um, many of the Palestinian people in the West Bank now, they, they can't go to cross over to Israel to work. So they're feeling the pressure. They've been working on the Israeli side. They've been working with the Jewish people, uh, going to work every day, enjoying life and, and going back to the West Bank. Um, and so right now they're, they're starting to get angry and bitter and so forth. We have to continue being agents of peace. We have to continue being on the ground here, person to person, mm -hmm. group to group, society to society, to show people the past, what, what we've gained from it, nothing. There's a lot more that unites us. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on what unites and let's build a better tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of way, many ways to approach that. From politics, they have their own angle. I think all angles need mm -hmm. to be asked, but the, the, the military needs to be, take its role, politics needs to take its role. You and I, the God soldiers, need to take, its, take our roles as well, and many other aspects mm -hmm. as well. That's, that's mm -hmm. the future. I'm optimistic. Amen. There's no doubt that in times like that, in time of war, the church has to stand and to be a watchman on the wall and to pray for what's going on in the Middle East. And I want to ask you, especially we always ask for prayers for the peace of Jerusalem. And today I want to ask you to pray for the Arab body of Messiah here in the land of the Bible, that God will give them a peace beyond their understanding and that God will give them a clarity in this dark, dark time. Please remember to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pastor Stephen, what a great honor to Thank be you. with you today. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom.